This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. I was born at Christmas time, one white winter day in December in Garden City, Kansas. Lead foil tinsel twinkled on the fragrant Christmas tree in the entry hall of the maternity ward. Red, yellow, green, blue bulbs glowed on the Colorado blue spruce, garlanded with strings of popcorn and cranberries. Glass globes reflected the colors of Christmas. Down the scrubbed, shining corridor, starched nurses came and went. December 22nd, 1940, a world at war, remembering the Prince of Peace. Christmas carols crackle over KIUL from a radio in the nurses' station. It's a boy, Dr. Sartorius tells my moaning mother. Ramona Grimsley nursed her firstborn through the night and watched snowflakes swirl around a lamppost outside the window. Ben Grimsley was proud. He gave the first cigar to Vern Mayo, after whom the baby was named. Ben won to Merle Myers, the dairyman. Ben saved the last two for Mose Neal, the father of his wife, and one for his own dad in Trenton, Missouri. When he telephoned the news to Emporia, Mose and Ola packed a car and drove the icy highway to Garden City, 300 miles west. By December 24th, the entire family had gathered to see the new baby. Grandpa Mose took everyone out to the Warren Hotel for Christmas Eve supper. Sage stuffing, turkey and gravy. And driving home, everyone listened solemnly to Edward R. Murrow describing bombing in Europe on the auto radio. It was a silent night, holy night in western Kansas, but not in London and Berlin. The lights, sounds, and scents of Christmas time were among the first I ever knew and have been favorites of mine since that first Yule long ago. Luminous colors, round chrome bells jingling with every opening of the door, hymns and carols in the air, the delicious bouquet of apple, pecan, and pumpkin pie from the oven, gravy, peas, and sweet potatoes, cider and cinnamon, and surrounding it all like a holiday halo of fragrance, the piney scents of evergreen from fresh-cut trees and wreaths and sprigs. There could be no better season to be born than on the only global holiday about a baby's birth. And little could I have known it then. But that baby boy in Bethlehem and I would someday grow to be best friends. Oh, I learned about him in nursery songs we sang in the years of my youth. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. And I came to believe, and more than to believe, to know that at the heart of this universe there beats a heart of love. God wrapped his heart in human flesh, and this baby Jesus came into the world. Christmas in Kansas was cold and windy most years, with tumbleweeds blowing across the crusted white drifts and leaving markings like footprints of winter birds across the snow. My youth group went to homes for the elderly and sang carols, and my dad and I drove sacks of groceries to poor families of my grade school friends and of basketball players he coached at the college where he and my mother had taught. I never forgot those visits, to windswept farmhouses and shacks in shambles by railroad tracks and culverts and iced over water ditches. In my little hometown 52 miles west of Dodge City, wartime winter was no easy season. I remember rationing books for many food items, scarce gasoline and diesel fuel for trucks and tractors, Thin cattle leaning against the wind, or resting by rusty fencing, hides crusted white with frost on the windward side. But those cattlemen and farming folks shared what they had at Christmas time, and nobody went hungry for long in western Kansas when I grew up. And in that, too, I learned a Christmas lesson about caring and sharing with people for whom life is a thin furrow plowed between hope and desperation. I learned about the Christ child in other seasons, too, when someone's barn burned down, and everyone for miles around would come on a Saturday and in one day, just one day, build a brand 
new barn for that farm family, no charge. It was all for free. That was Christmas. Christmas in August, perhaps. But I saw it again and again as a boy. Or when a summer hailstorm ruined a crop, or the Arkansas River flooded its banks, or a prairie fire swept across the horizon, people dropped whatever they were doing, and they all rushed out to help. When a house caught fire, the downtown siren sounded, and unpaid volunteer firefighters for miles around would show up to battle the blaze. When tornadoes struck, horse-drawn wagons full of Mennonites, girls wearing bonnets, men wearing beards, would arrive to help clean up and rebuild. And in all this, I learned of Christmas, too. It was God helping his children by moving his other children to help his children. And that was Christmas any day of the year. That was love in muddy work boots, sweaty cinder blackened overalls, and sweaty shirts. It was the love of God in human flesh, neighbors helping neighbors, even helping passing strangers no one knew. And that, too, was Christmas in Kansas when I was a boy. And it remains at the heart of Christmas today, for just as God became man in Bethlehem, so the love of God takes on human flesh each time your helping hand is held outstretched to someone needing it. The love of God becomes incarnate in your life when you begin to live in that love for other people. For the two great commandments were and are and ever shall remain the laws of love. 2,000 years ago and even to this day, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And Christmas in Kansas was a huge three-story high fiberglass Santa Claus standing in front of the Garden City Post Office. The handiwork of the man who was to become my father-in-law, Gay Smith. Gay also opened Toyland every December, a magical section of his Mayo's appliance store with electric trains clicking around hundreds of feet of shiny steel track on shelves stacked with dolls, toy soldiers, Buck Rogers, spark-spitting ray guns, trikes and bicycles, little doll houses, marbles and footballs, sleds and basketball hoops, chemistry and magic sets, wind-up drum-playing monkeys and every other imaginable toy to delight the hearts of small-town children. And old Ira Travis, who had a Santa suit, would take awestruck urchins on his knee and listen to their plaintive pleadings for whatever gadgets they hoped to find in their stockings that year, saying, well, now we'll see about that, or I'll do my very best. And always there was the grade school Christmas concert held in Ben Grimsley Gymnasium, the biggest building in town named for my father. And where each December proud parents watched runny-nosed students holding little battery pin lights to resemble candles and all singing together Gloria and Excelsius Deo and Silent Night, Holy Night. As I think back through the years to those distant days of boyhood, I remember that there really was a lot of love in that little western Kansas town. Everybody knew each other. We worked and played and survived the Sahara summers and Arctic winters together, and we learned a lesson I wish for the world, that if you really get to know people, you really get to love them. And Garden City, Kansas, was a town where almost everybody knew almost everybody. And in the clear, cold Christmas sky shone timeless stars, reminding me of higher things, eternal things, the things of God, who loved our little town as much as he loved Bethlehem, I thought. And he had a plan for that blonde baby boy born December 22nd, 1940, just as surely as he had a plan for that other boy born in that little town 2,000 years ago, and just as surely as he has a plan for every baby born upon this earth because we're here to learn to love. 
And when you learn to love, you've learned the lesson of Christmas by heart. Christmas is a child's crayon drawing given to a grandma, a teenager shoveling snow off an elderly neighbor's sidewalk, a free turkey given to someone without enough to eat. Christmas is remembering the forgotten, refusing to pass by the ones that life and the world have passed by, telling a joke to someone who needs to laugh, jump-starting a car with a dead battery for somebody who needs help. Christmas is thanking the clerk at the checkout stand, letting someone stumbling with weariness in line in front of you. It's giving blood to the Red Cross. Christmas is standing in unmoved opposition to unfairness, injustice, cruelty, and hate. Christmas is not only refusing to pass on gossip, it's refusing even to listen to it. It's believing in God and believing in people. Christmas is living in an undiscourageable goodwill. It is never growing weary in well-doing. It is being true to the best you know. Christmas is the rebirth of faith and hope and love in your heart. Each morning you arise to face the day. And with that faith, all things, you yourself, will become as new. And any morning you arise with the love of God and others in your soul is Christmas morning, whatever the month, whatever the day, whatever the season of the year. Merry Christmas. And for free literature on the spiritual life, things I've written on these very topics, faith and hope and love, getting to know God, finding God, growing spiritually, about your living relationship with God, how your life can be transformed by these ancient teachings, 2,000 years old, yet ever new. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. We believe God is the perfect and loving spiritual father, and we can experience this life-transforming truth through decisions and actions of our personal faith, that all the peoples of this planet are brothers and sisters in God's great spiritual family, that God has given an actual fragment of his being to live and work, dwell within each one of us. The Father has a will which is the greatest good for your life, and if you choose to seek the will of God, there lies before you an eternal adventure of striving to attain the supreme values of truth and beauty and goodness. The ultimate goal of existence is to reach for the very perfection of God and live in love for God and others. Once again, the free literature available yours, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day and Merry Christmas.